if Congress continues to talk about more sanctions against Iran, could that derail, undermine, screw up those talks? Well, the president, I think, made a very strong case uh, about this um, in the speech. Um, he also made a good case uh, on it in the press conference on Friday. And I think you've seen uh, just today in the uh, Washington Post, uh, foreign ministers of Germany, uh, the UK, uh, and France making a similar case, which is to say that uh, we are in a delicate state in the negotiations. We uh, ought to give some time and space for that to work. Uh, keep in mind that the existence of uh, and the maintenance of the sanctions that we currently have on Iran will cost it tens of billions of dollars, even even as we are negotiating with them at the moment. So we think that rather than apply additional sanctions now or to have Congress try in some kind of unprecedented way uh, uh, insert itself as uh, the decider on this deal, uh, we think that we ought to be given the space to make this deal permanent, to, to build on the progress we've made in the last year when uh, the program has been frozen and key aspects of it have been drawn back, uh, and we're going to continue to work that. So we think Congress should give us the time and space to do that. The alternative, of course, Mike, is the international coalition of countries represented by that op-ed in the Washington Post this morning, but also including, importantly, the Chinese and the Russians, risks fracturing. And if the Iranians can get out of that pressure that they're under from a unified international community and blame failure of the negotiations on us. Our ability then on the other side of that uh, to unify the world is dramatically weakened. And that's a missed opportunity. Could you make a permanent deal with Iran while the Washington Post Tehran bureau chief is still being detained? Well, we're very worried uh, about uh, Jason and we'll continue to do everything we can on that issue.